Hey YouTube, it's Sarah here with Crimson and Wool and we are going to get into it. We are going to get into the nitty gritty of amigurumi. And so this video may be a little bit more detailed, may have information that you already know. Um, or if you're absolutely new, then I want to give you some more information on how to start making amigurumi. So this is the project that we'll be making in this video, but before we get into this project, I want to go over a few things, okay? Especially if you've never crocheted before, because I don't want you to start something or watch this video, get discouraged or think it's not beginner friendly, because it really is. It's step by step, but if you've never crocheted before, then amigurumi might not be the place to start because there is a few key elements and key things that you need to know before you actually can create cute little projects like this. And so that's what I wanna talk about. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and get started on the supplies that you'll need to help you obtain amigurumi projects. But real quick, real quick, real quick, if you have never ever crocheted before, then this is not the video for you. And I don't wanna I don't wanna be discouraging or anything because you can do this, I promise. If you don't give up and you keep trying, you will be able to make dolls and amigurumi projects. But you need to learn the basics of crocheting first. And so there's some amazing tutorials out there on YouTube. And I'm gonna put some of those links in the description box below. That way you could follow those. You need to get the hang of doing a chain. You need to get the hang of working into the chain and then um, understanding basic stitches like single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet. But the main stitch that you use is a single crochet. So go ahead and start there first. Once you have the hang of it, then go ahead and come back to this video. I know that's probably not encouraging right now, especially for those who really want to make um, dolls and stuff, but you have to start with the basics first. And so go ahead and do that. If you are, um, if you have crocheted and you want to learn how to crochet amigurumi and have a beginner friendly tutorial, then this is the video for you. And so with that, let's talk about supplies needed. And so we're going to go over that. You need a crochet hook that is smaller than the size recommended for the yarn that you want to use. So I have this yarn here. This is the Karen one pound yarn. And this is the yarn that I love to use for my amigurumi projects. This is a four ply yarn and the recommended hook size is a five millimeter. And so I use a four millimeter. And then um, I will be using this today in the, pro or in the project we're gonna make and the color that I am using is Limeade. And so there's that. I like the Caron one pound yarn because this is thicker than most four ply yarns, but still works really well with this four millimeter crochet hook. And so that's what I would recommend for you. So we have our hook and then we have our yarn. You also need a stitch marker. I personally like to use bobby pins. I feel like they're much easier to get in and out of the stitches. I highly recommend the mini ones, which I will put in the description box below. I'll link to them because then they're not as long, but I use whichever I could get my hands on because they're all around the house all the time. <laughs> my husband hates it. <laughs> so yes, so you need your stitch marker. Um, I use the bobby pin. You definitely need some stuffing. I use polyfill. I, um, you can also use like a stuffed animal or a pillow if you don't or can't get a hold of any of this. But if you're looking to sell, um, I recommend getting some good polyfill. Um, I use my 60% off coupon at Joann's whenever I can um, to get the big box. So that's what I use. And then safety eyes. So I love putting eyes on anything and everything if I can when making amigurumi because it just adds just that extra cuteness to it. I love these ones. I get them from Amazon. The link will be also in the description box below. Um, I like to use these because the backing is really secure. If you are making this for a baby, I wouldn't recommend it because the packaging states three and uh, older. 
but um you could also just let whoever knows not to let the baby you know just chew and gnaw and leave, be left alone with it um I could also recommend putting some hot glue on the back after you secured it so there's lots you to do lots you can do um to ensure that these won't come out but the packaging does stay three and older in this cute cactus I just want to go over a few things all the things and the supplies needed to create this project will be in the description box below so you could go there as well as the very basic written pattern you could just copy paste and print it um, if you want to just create the cylinder part of this and not the actual cactus then you don't have to do that I'm just doing that for those who want to obtain an actual project but if you are not quite there yet, then you could please just feel free to do the process of making this cylinder to get the hang of it. If you've done that, then continue on and do the extra steps. But if some of these steps are too much for you, don't get discouraged. Just work on what you can and you will eventually get there. So to make this, you will learn how to increase. You're going to learn first, you're going to learn how to do your magic circle. You're going to increase you're going to be working in the round. So that's why it's super important to have your stitch marker because you'll be working in the round, which will be um, continuing in each round. You're not going to slip stitch, turn, and then work again. It's just working into the round. And then you're also going to learn how to decrease. You're gonna learn how to close in your gap. And then if you wanna do that, you will learn how to attach to your amigurumi projects. You will learn how to place your safety eyes and do the stuffing. And then also you will learn how to add a keychain. So that has been a long enough introduction, but it is well needed for those who haven't learned how to do it. It's some tips and tricks and some information that is vital and um, is very helpful in learning how to make one of these. So finally, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a magic circle. So a magic circle is creating a circle that we work our stitches into and at the end we're gonna pull so that it closes up. So what I do is I take my yarn, we have the working end over here which is connected to the skein itself and then we have the tail end. So I'm gonna take the tail and I'm going to wrap it around my finger like that. And then I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to insert it into this part that is wrapped around my finger and I'm going to pull this working tail through right there, okay? And so now, if you could see here, we have what looks like a pretzel. And so we have the tail end here and then we have the working end. So we are going to work a single crochet, so you will yarn over and pull through and that counts as it does not count as a stitch that's just joining so that this doesn't fall apart you know on you if you haven't I'm gonna say this one more time if you've never crocheted before then I would not recommend you to start with this this is for those who have crocheted and have crochet knowledge or are looking to start a beginner friendly amigurumi project so Next, we are going to work single crochets into this magic circle, and we're going to work six of them. So you're going to take your yarn, and you are going to insert your hook into your magic circle, and you are going to work your single crochets. If you want a refresher for a single crochet, you insert your hook into the, the magic circle, you pull your yarn through, and you pull up, and you have two loops on your hook, you pull your hook, which is yarning over, so you're taking your yarn and bringing it over your hook, and you're going to pull through both loops, and that's your single crochet. So go ahead and work four more single crochets into your magic circle, and I will do this slowly for you guys to see. So we should have six single crochets into the magic circle. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
Now this is where it gets fun. You're going to take your tail end and you're going to pull and this will close in that gap. So instead of doing a chain and working, um, connecting your chain and working into that, this is just cutting that step out and it also brings this par portion of your work a bit tighter. So this is round one and we've worked six single crochets into our magic circle. And what we want to do is we want to expand this circle and to do that, we're going to increase. And increasing is working two single crochets into each stitch for this specific round. So you're going to insert your hook into your first stitch. This one can always be a bit tighter and that's okay. So work your single crochet and then work another single crochet into that same stitch. At this point, we need to grab our stitch marker and you want to place it into the first stitch that you worked. That way you could keep track because when we're working our amigurumi, we're not joining with a slip stitch. We're working into the round. And so working into the round is continuing to work without closing off that round. So the slip stitch help, or the, sorry, the stitch marker helps us keep track of our round. Working two single crochets into each stitch. So doing this, we are increasing the amount of stitches that are being worked in this round. So the first round had six single crochets. And now since we are working two single crochets into each stitch, at the end of the round, when we hit the stitch marker, we should have a total of 12 single crochets. All right, so we have our 12 single crochets and we're at the end of round two. So what I like to do at this point is I want to tie a knot. I want to make sure this tail is nice and tight and that my gap is closed. And then I'm going to tie a knot really close to the end of this. So I'm bringing it down and then I push my finger down and pull. And so then that way we have a really tight knot and I do that twice. And so let's go ahead and cut off that part, just leaving a little bit. Moving on to round three. We are going to do another increase round. We're not going to do two single crochets into each stitch, but we still want this to increase. And so what we're going to do is work one single crochet into the first stitch. Move up our stitch marker. and two single crochets into the next stitch. So that's the pattern repeat. You're working one single crochet and then a single crochet increase, which is two into the same stitch. And then when you work that same pattern repeat all the way around, one single crochet, one single crochet increase, then at the end of round three, you should have a total of 18 single crochets. So we've done three rounds and I have 18 single crochets. So that is it for our increases. Now we are going to work single crochets. Um, and so to do that, we don't need to increase anymore. We're just gonna simply work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And we're gonna do that for nine rounds total. So you simply work one single crochet into each stitch till you hit your stitch marker. Then you put one single crochet into your first stitch of the next round and move your stitch marker up. This will help you keep track of your rounds. 
and you just continue working. So we started out with one, two, three rounds, which was our increased round. And then we're doing nine rounds of just working single crochets. So once you are done, you should have a total of nine rounds. So go ahead and keep on working and I will meet you back at the end of the ninth round. All right, so we finished the 12 rounds, or I finished up to round 12. And now, before we do our decreasing and stuff, let's place our safety eyes. So, I'm going to place these before we finish because we have to put the backings on and then if we stuffed or closed up, then we basically couldn't put the backings. So, um, I'm gonna have two parts to the eyes. The first part is actually placing them now and then when we are finished, I will show you, show you how to sew on eyes. And so I'll just do that on the back side. But to do the safety eyes, I'm going to count Actually, let's turn this around because we haven't done the bottom, but I want them to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, between, between rounds nine and 10. So place one safety eye between rounds nine and 10, and then go ahead and get your other safety eye, and you're gonna move, you're gonna connect it to this part and count over one, two, three, and then place it in the fourth stitch. So the eyes are placed between rounds nine and 10, four stitches apart. Then you take your safety backing, and then I will turn this over so you could see, and you're gonna work that over and push it. Now these can be hard. If you have arthritis or like, or sore wrists or just fingers, whatever. I've seen some people um, recommend taking a washer and so you put your piece down and put your washer over it and that helps to push it down. So that is just a little tip on um, pushing those backings on. And so now we have um, our eyes placed and now you can already tell just by doing the eyes that this little cactus cutie has some character. We want to stuff. With stuffing, I would work it a little at a time. I'm not saying like a little, like that much. <laughs> Just go ahead and get, you don't want to shove like all of this in there. You want to get like just a little bit like this and then place it in and push it down and smooth it around. And then grab another bunch about the same amount, push it down and smooth it around. And so this will kind of help um, and even, uh, it will help just get the stuffing in there evenly. And like I've said, I like to take my scissors and push it down like this. And so just be careful when doing that. And then at this point, you wanna just push in between the eyes to get that stuffing in there as well. And so that's a good amount. You don't want to overstuff because you do have to continue working. And so you don't want to continue working and get your stuffing caught into the stitches that you still have to work. So let's move on to round 13. One single crochet into the first stitch and then place your stitch marker. All right, so let's review real quick because I feel like this will help you understand um, what we're doing. So when we started, we had six single crochets and then we increased with 12 and then we increased again one single crochet, a single crochet increase and that got us 18. So now we have 18 stitches and we need to repeat that process but with decreases. So with round 13, we're working one single crochet and then we're doing a single crochet decrease. So to do that, we're gonna work into these front loops only and this will help the stitch be tighter and also those back stitches 
will also help there not be so much gapping. So to do that, you're going to take your stitch or your hook, insert it into the front loop only of the next stitch. Then you're going to pull just a little bit and wrap around and insert into the next stitch. So you have two front loops of the stitch or two stitches with their front loop only on your hook. Now you're going to yarn over and pull your working yarn through both of those loops. And you have two stitches remaining on your hook and then you're going to pull through those two stitches. And now you have one single crochet decrease. So you've taken two stitches and you have decreased to make it one. And so you're going to continue that pattern repeat. One single crochet and then your single crochet decrease. And so at the end of this round, you should have a total of 12 single crochets. So we have 12 stitches remaining and we want to decrease to six stitches. So to do that, we are going to work one single crochet decrease all the way around. So we're taking two stitches and decreasing them. And you're gonna repeat that six times. But what I like to do is stuff a little bit more but again, making sure that you don't over stuff to where you can't continue to work your stitches. So just take your stuffing and push it in. And then if your eyes start to push up like that, it's okay. I'll show you what how to fix that after we're done. Just worry about getting your cactus stuff to where it is not overstuffed and it's pushing through, but to where it's not understuffed and it doesn't have its shape. This is our last round. So round 14, like I said, we are going to do a single crochet decrease into each stitch. So go ahead and take your hook, insert it into the front loop of your first stitch, wrap it around, insert it into the front loop of that next stitch, yarn over, pull through. You have two loops remaining on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. And that's what you're going to repeat five more times. And then at the end of round 14, you should have a total of six stitches. All right, at this point, we have six stitches remaining on our hook and you wanna cut off your yarn, leaving a good 12 inches. So you could close your gap right here, finish stuffing. So go ahead and get your stuffing. like that, have it lay flat. Although this is just a simple project, um, I will at the end show you how to add a keychain. Um, and then uh, if you just wanna display it, it can lean up against something. I just wanted something that was an easy, easy beginner-friendly project that just wasn't a ball. So, my eyes are a little wonky and what I do is I take my tapestry needle and I insert it and just push the eye down. So the, the back of the eye um, where it's long, I'm taking my needle and pushing it against that and bringing it down. So now go ahead and take your tapestry needle and we're gonna close that gap. And this is so similar to the way we do our decreases. You're basically just taking your needle and you're wrapping it into the front loop only of your first stitch and then wrapping it around and bringing it into that next stitch. And then you pull through and repeat that again into the next two stitches. And then one last time into the last two stitches. And so now 
this is where it creates like that magic circle, but at the end and then you pull it and then you have your gap closed nice and tight. So we are going to just work our yarn tail back into the body and then work it back and forth like this. Just make sure that when you work it back, you don't, um, you don't want to go into this stitch because when you pull, it's going to, I'll show you, it's going to pull this tight like that and you don't want that to happen. So you want to make sure that you just insert it into the same hook, uh, same area that you did before. So then that way it just pulls through. And then if you have any gaps, you can just kind of move that around. So this just kind of helps it not to come loose. Let's go ahead and make our little cactus arm. Do this. To make the arm, you are going to start with a magic circle again. So a reminder, wrap the yarn around your finger, bring your hook into that portion, bring your working yarn through, and then do a single crochet, which does not count as a stitch. And now again, you're going to work six single crochets into a magic circle for round one, giving you a total of six single crochets. Pull your tail. Now we are going to work round two. And again, it is the same, it's the same stitches. You want to increase to 12. So to do that, you are working two single crochets into each stitch all the way around. Remember to place your stitch marker so that you don't lose track of your stitches. And continue working two single crochets into each stitch. At this point, let's go ahead and pull our tail, tighten that up real nice, and then do our two knots. All right, so now we have 12 stitches, and for the next two rounds, you are going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So that will get you to the end of round four. Round five, we are going to decrease. So go ahead and work one single crochet decrease into each stitch so you're taking two stitches and you're decreasing to one so at the end of the round you should have a total of six single crochets and you don't need to worry about stuffing because this is going to be a flat portion all right so now we're going to take our work. You can remove your stitch marker at this point and you're going to push down flat so you don't need to stuff or anything. And so now your work is flat. So what we wanna do is create an area to sew this onto the body. You are going to take your hook and insert it. I'm gonna pinch this together and I'm gonna insert it through both sides of the work. Both sides and then you yarn over and work a single crochet over those, over that area. So let me do that again one more time. Insert your hook into both sides of the work. Bring your yarn through. You have two loops on your hook and bring your yarn through both loops. So you're just basically working two single crochets over this to close. And then you're going to cut off your yarn, leaving enough so that you could sew it onto the body. All right, so we have two pieces. Now you're gonna learn how to sew on to your amigurumi. 
So you have your piece right here. That is the arm. If you don't want to, then at least you've learned how to make this and you're not ready for that part, that's okay. Then you made this cute little character. If you color changed, you can make it into a piece of sushi. There's so much you could do, but if you would like to continue on, then we are going to add the arm. So go ahead and grab your arm needle and attach it to your arm. And we are going to position that where we want it on the cactus. So I'm thinking about right here would be good. So turn it, turn your work. I like to make sure that this tail is where I want to start my work. And I'm gonna lay it flat. So I'm just gonna lay it down onto the project. I'm going to take my needle and insert it into this part of the body. So I'm just basically inserting it into a stitch and bringing it back around. And that needle is going to insert into the actual arm itself. And this is going to attach it. So you're gonna go ahead and pull tight and you're gonna continue to do the same thing into the arm. And you should only have to do this about three times. So go ahead and insert your needle, bring it around into the arm and pull tight. So at this point, it's definitely gonna be loose here, so we wanna tighten that, and then we also wanna tighten this part down onto the body. So to do that, take your needle and come close about right here into your work, and push your needle down, and then you're gonna pull this tight like that, and that's gonna bring it down closer. Then we're going to insert our needle back into the same area we came out of and bring it through over to the bottom part of the cactus arm and pull your yarn and then insert it into the arm itself like that. And then you are going to insert your needle back into the cactus. And then as you could see here, once I've done that, it is going to tighten up and bring that a little bit closer. So now we have our arm attached. And then we are just going to simply work the remainder of that tail back and forth. All right, guys, I hope you've made it this far. And if you have, then you've created your first amigurumi project. And I'm gonna show you how to add some detail or to create it into a keychain. So I love to add blush. It is just something simple and easy, but adds a lot to the character. So I'm just gonna get a blush brush, or this is technically an eyeshadow brush. It's just a 99 cent one. Um, so I'm gonna take my blush and I'm just going to apply it simply right under the eye to the side a little bit. I'm gonna do that on the other side. And this will probably wear off over time and that's okay. But if you want something more permanent, then you can use paint, but I don't feel comfortable doing that, especially because there's room for error and I would hate to have worked on a project and then mess it up with paint. But if you feel comfortable with that, then please feel free to do that. So now we've added some blush and then let's work on adding a keychain. So to add a keychain, I have my pliers here and I have two pieces that the keychain comes with. We have the keychain itself right here, and then we have our little ring that is going to attach to the amigurumi and then connect the keychain. So what I do is I take my little pliers and I'm going to work this into the middle right here and bring it around like that. Then you take your key ring and you bring the chain and attach it to your loop right there and then close it. Close it shut 
and then you just bring the portion that it closed back into the work itself to hide that. And then you have a cute little cactus keychain. Alrighty guys, so you did it. We have a cactus and we've turned it into a keychain. Um, you could also add a flower, you could add a bow. There's so much you could do with it. So with that, thank you so much for watching this video. I was super nervous. Um, I hope that this video helped and I hope that it wasn't all over the place. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. You could also reach me on my Instagram at Crimson and Wool, which if you go to my homepage up at the banner in the right hand corner, you could click there. It'll take you directly to my Instagram. You can message me there as well. Um, so yes, I hope that you had fun making this cute little amigurumi cactus that we turned into a keychain. Um, please remember, if you like this video, to give it a big thumbs up. Um, and then if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. That way you could be notified anytime I come out with a new video. But with that, I look forward to crocheting with you guys again next time. Yeah.